We're going to call this meeting to order, and uh, I, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. and I to read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please. On Thursday, August, that's not the right meeting, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let's start with this year. <laughs> On Wednesday, January 8, 2020, notice of this meeting was sent to the press and the current of Ed Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Ed Harbor Township Clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Thank you. May we have roll call? Mr. Del Barca. Here. Mr. Ellis. Here. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Here. Mr. Price. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mrs. Summer. Here. Mrs. Salagi. Here. Mr. Um, Bur Mrs. Bird, I'm sorry. Mrs. Bird. Mr. Bird. I'm so really? sorry. <laughs> Present. And Mr. Castellano. Here. Um, if we can please uh, rise for the flag salute. After the flag salute, we're going to have a moment of silence for Mary Catalano, who is a retired secretary from Slaybaugh School, who passed away. Okay, first order of business is, I need a motion for minutes. That would be 4.1 through 4.4. Can I have a motion? Please? Motion. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? If not, roll call please. Mr. Delabar. Yes. Mr. Ellis. Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Yes. Mr. Price. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Okay, before we start our superintendent's report, just a quick word. Uh, we're about to enter the month of February, which will start our budget season in earnest. Um, a month from now, we'll receive our state aid figures. Um, and just to keep everyone um, uh, up to date, we are actively engaged with our elected officials, uh, both on the legislative uh, and the executive uh, side. Um, right now, our focus is on officials in the executive branch, both in the governor's office and the Department of Education, um, because they will be releasing those preliminary numbers to us in, in four short weeks from now. Um, this is an ongoing process, but now is the beginning of the most intense time as we prepare our budget. So just that quick update, and with that, I'm going to turn the superintendent's report over to our superintendent. Okay, good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. <clears throat> to our first official business school board meeting for uh, the year 2020. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to go through my superintendent's report. As you know, our superintendent's report is based on our student learning goals of student, improving student achievement, improving climate and culture, and community connections that we make uh, throughout the month, okay? And that's our staff and our students and our administrators. And just to give you a highlight of some of the great things that we do, and there's many, many more, I can promise you that. And I encourage you to go to our website and check out each one of our schools and the announcements on our banners. Um, but I capture uh, the ones that um, really stand out and I'll share them with you. So on the student achievement, um, the ELL program had some poetry sharing that occurred at one of our schools. Our mock trial competition um, is, was happen is happening throughout this month. In fact, tonight the team was in Atlantic City and I hear that they won and I was hoping that Nick was here so he can give us some insight, but he's probably out celebrating um, and that's, that's awesome that um, that, that committee, that club, I should say, um, is, is a compilation of students and teachers that work together throughout the years to prepare students for mock trials, uh, future lawyers of America. Is that him walking in? I'm going to give him the floor. Uh, okay. All right. Welcome. 
Our robotics teams from our middle schools com competed in the LEGO competition in LEGO League and um, Alder and Fernwood fared well and I believe Fernwood won the championship for that this year. Digital music is going on in our music department at the high school and Eagle Records is now official. I'm sure Dr. Kodetsky will talk a little bit more about that. Uh, if, you if you get the Atlantic City Press, you saw that our AP seminar and research uh, class from the high school got some press. Academic challenge team uh, scored six out of nine first places. Um, and I'll, I'll share the statistics with you, but that's pretty impressive um, as they compete academically against area schools. So EHT's got some pretty impressive uh, things going on. And our wood tech uh, dipped their guitars. So the students in there are making guitars, but they dip them in substance and um, in the colors and designs that the students um, selected. You'll see that in the video. Yeah, that's uh, continuing with student achievement um, in our fine performing arts area, our high school, middle school string, uh, and orchestra students participated in an event at Rowan University, and these are select students, and that orchestra uh, was conducted by Dr. Kadetsky. Um, I had the opportunity to go on uh, was that, Sunday in early January, right? And that was very, very enjoyable. Um, our, also, our All South Jersey Junior High School Band and Choir students, uh, we have selections there. There was like nine in one area and seven in the other. Our All South Jersey Wind Ensemble, like Christine Castellano, Kayla D'Alverio, and Joe Sutton, who were selected to All South Jersey Wind Ensemble. And moving on to All State and Symphonic Bands, Christine Castellano and Joe Sutton. So we have uh, students representing, representing us at very high levels uh, in the state and throughout South Jersey in the areas of uh, band, orchestra, and choir. Um, Miller School was named a grief sensitive school. Uh, they received a $500 grant from the New York Life Foundation. And uh, this falls under student achievement because part of student achievement is social emotional learning. And pro professional development was provided for our teachers for the writer's workshop. <clears throat> this shows the high school uh, science league competition and just to give you the schools that we competed against was Egg Harbor Township, Mainland, Hamilton, Cedar Creek, uh, Atlantic City and Apsigan. So we scored six out of the nine uh, subject areas. And some of them are uh, chemistry, honors physics, AP physics, physics, AP environmental science. So very impressive. Climate and culture, great kindness challenges going on. Winter concerts throughout the district in choir um, and in music. Not even once program at the high school. This is where the Egg Harbor Township Police Department brings in uh, police officers and speakers who speak to our students and uh, make them aware of the dangers of drug use. Perfect attendance <coughs> recognition throughout the district, particularly at Eagle Academy. And our governor's teacher and educational services professional of the year selections were made. Uh, teachers were selected by their colleagues and announced by their administration just this month. We, just so the board knows, uh, we do usually do that recognition in February. We will not be doing it until um, April or May this year. Holiday celebrations and Renaissance pep rallies occurred. Um, <clears throat> Jane Medio, our teacher at the high school, was selected as the Atlanta, Atlanta County District 16 VFW Teacher of the Year. So that's very impressive. I know the high school uh, recognized her for that. And Martin Luther King Day lessons, activities, a PCT occurred at Swift. African American Studies class uh, visited Stockton in a day of service um, was held in Atlantic City that our students attended as well. Community Connections, we had our parent-teacher conferences at our middle schools. Nor'easter Nick visited the Miller School and uh, showed the teacher, uh, teachers and students about weather. Philadelphia Eagles, their senior VP and CFO, were right here at Alder Avenue Middle School. Uh, showed off the Eagles uh, Super Bowl ring and talked about some of the um, operations in, in the Philadelphia Eagles organization. PG story time <coughs> occurred, um, PJ story time occurred at Swift School. And the Atlantic Care Healthy Schools <coughs> initiative, the Atlantic Area 360 initiative occurred in our school. <coughs> Alder Avenue had a visitor from Harvard. It is a former EHT graduate and he attended Alder Middle School and there's an initiative that Alder, I mean that Harvard is holding is to go back and, and make connections with your middle school. So Leo Shai Shell was here um, at Alder and then sharing his college experience with the students. So I think that that was excellent opportunities for the students uh, to hear, you know, face to face about a college experience. 
Self-Esteem Night for Girls will be held at Fernwood this uh, January 30th. And um, just reminding you to keep in touch with the Pursuing Public Health Initiative that we have running on social media and our website. Mr. Santilli uh, has kicked that off. There's now we just a series of three um, shows in collaboration with the Egg Harbor Township Police Department. So we're very proud of that, that community connection and that partnership. Also our parent camp for February 27th at 6.30 at the high school. Okay, now it's time for recognition of the Board of Education. Dr. Gruccio, before you go ahead with that, Mrs. Elko informs me she uh, that we just found out our mock trial team, in fact, won the county championship. Am I correct? Yeah. Do I have that right? They have just won the county championship. Yeah, Congratulations to the high school students on being county champs. That's quite an achievement. Okay, so we're going to move to the recognition of for the Board of Education. It's a resolution that the board's going to adopt. Uh, it recognizes um, the board for their service as volunteers that sit before you, volunteers who are governing the school district um, and following the New Jersey School Board's uh, regulations and criteria. So this resolution, Mr. President and board members, um, states that the New Jersey School Boards Association has declared January 2020 to be the School Board Recognition Month, a time where the residents can acknowledge the contributions that our board members make to our school district. And Acre Township Board of Education is one of 580 local school boards in New Jersey, which sets policy and oversees operations of the public school. Whereas the EHT Board of Education embraces the goal of high quality education for all New Jersey public school students. <clears throat> Whereas New Jersey's local school boards help determine the educational goals for approximately 1.4 million children in pre-K through 12th grade. And New Jersey's 5,000 local school board members, 5,000 local volunteers who receive no remuneration for their services act as advocates for public school students as they work with administrators, teachers and parents for the betterment of public education. And whereas school boards strive to provide the resources necessary to meet the needs of all students, and I say that capital A-L-L, -L, including those with special needs, and whereas boards of education provide accountability to the public as they communicate the needs of the school district to the public <coughs> and convey school administrators the public's expectation for schools. And whereas New Jersey can take pride in its schools, which rank among the nation's best and key achievement indicators, such as national assessment of educational progress scores and the preparation for college through advanced placement offerings and SAT assessments. Now, Mr. President, if you would uh, join me on the floor as it be resolved that the Egg Harbor Township Board of Education does hereby recognize the services of local school board members throughout New Jersey as we join communities statewide in observing January 2020 as School Board Recognition Month and be it further resolved that Egg Harbor Township Board of Education urges all New Jersey citizens to work with their local boards of education and public school staffs towards the advancement of our children's education. Sign me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And on behalf of the Egg Harbor Township uh, Board of Education, a certificate of appreciation, um, I'll begin with Mr. Castellano, uh, who's an Egg Harbor Township Board of Education president in recognition of the dedicated service to the school children of the community of Egg Harbor Township during the school board recognition month. So again, congratulations. No, I'll, I'll let you carry okay. on. I I'm think you said on. it all. Thank you, board members. It's okay. Thank you. And with that, I'll just present uh, Mr. Delamarca, the certificate of appreciation. Mrs. Marita Sullivan, Mrs. Amy Summer, Mrs. Tamika Gilbert Floyd. Thank you. On this way now. Mrs. Christy Bird. Thank you. Mrs. Barbara Salagi. Mr. Ray Ellis. And Mr. Mike. Thank you. Thank you.
it's always to ha great to have students a part of what we do. Okay, so moving on to um, pretty much getting to the end of our budget presentations. We've been doing this since September, so we have two supervisors tonight who are going to share with you um, information about their uh, department as well as their future plan. So we'll begin with Dr. Mark Debsey, Supervisor of Fine Performing Arts. Space for the pop-up. <laughs> So um, good evening, everybody, and it's a pleasure to, to stand before you and share some of this information. And because Dr. Gruccio uh, included so much of my information in her presentation, I'll be able to keep this under a half an hour easily, uh, no problem at all. <laughs> uh, all kidding aside, we have uh, we just I just came here for our Music Honor Society induction, and we have Mrs. Fogelman's retirement reception coming up. So I will go through this quickly, and I'll preface it with uh, I received an email from Dr. Gruccio, then more than one phone call from Mr. Santilli uh, saying, yeah, we reviewed your slides. And uh, we want to make sure you know that you're really aligned to district goals and to your budget things, and you know just make sure you have all that going on. And I went back and I reviewed them and I tweaked a couple things, and then I, you know, rethought to myself, you know, as I present this thing, that if I have to really clearly explain the alignment, then I'm probably not doing my job correctly. <coughs> so I went back and, and tweaked a few things, but I think you're, you'll get the gist of what's going on with the fine performing arts department. We are more expansive than I ever even knew when I was a part of the department as a teacher because it goes K through 12, it goes before school, it goes after school, it goes weekends, it goes evenings. Uh, so I, what I'm gonna give you is just a little glimpse. And if you wanna see, uh, we pretty much keep an anecdotal record of everything that goes on on, um, on our My, I mean, not our MySpace, on our Facebook page. So the reason that uh, our students are, I would love to say it's, um, the, the reason that our students are doing so well is the collaboration that's going on in our department. It's at the highest levels it's ever been in, in my uh, 25 years here. Whenever we have something going on, you will always see our music and our teachers working together. And we were always in silos for a long time. We were actually even in unhealthy competition with each other, school to school, uh, program to program. And that those barriers are broken down. And when those barriers broke down, uh, we really paved the way for a lot of student achievement and a lot of success that I'm gonna to show you here. So there's our art teachers hanging out, doing some planning. All of our music teachers, K through 12, uh, some of our guests from Rowan. So one of the things that was tasked to me when I uh, came on board was that uh, Alder and Fernwood uh, had completely different music departments, and we'll leave it at that. And we really wanted to get those things aligned and to make sure that success and achievement and collaboration and innovation uh, were equal at both schools. And we have done just that. Um, you can't tell from looking at those pictures which symphony, which band, which wind ensemble, which choir is Alder, and which one is Fernwood. And I'm not going to tell you. But I can tell you now, instead of having Alder and Fernwood, this is the new equation. Alder and Fernwood equals EHTHS performing arts. So we've aligned Alder and Fernwood, and we've got them working together, collaborating really well. And we also have our fantastic elective program in the middle schools where students can choose where they want to be and who they want to do it with and how often they want to do it. And if you look, uh, it's no coincidence that if you look at those last two numbers, indicate the, 18, the last 18 months of our middle school elective programs. And you see that our, what's gone on with our orchestra enrollment in the high school, as well as our wind ensemble enrollment at the high school, which is our audition group. You have to audition to be in that group that's honors level. I'll back up to the other slide. Here's our other two enrollment charts. We did not even have enough kids to run music theory uh, in 17 and 18. Now, in 19 and 20, we're the only school in the county that has a standalone AP theory class. So what that means by standalone is a lot of times we'll have four or five kids uh, sign up for theory, and we can't run a class with three teachers because Dr. Charles will never let me do it, no matter how I try to slide it by him. So we would have to combine them with another class. We had a teacher teaching AP and CP to different students at different levels at the same time, and it's not the best way to do things. We now have the only standalone AP music theory class um, in the county. When people want to learn and people want to get better, they're coming to our schools and to our students to learn how to do this. This is the third year now. You see we have a great collaboration with Rowan University that when those students take methods classes, 
rather than looking at it theoretically or having the students in the class pretend they're students, we really bring our students there and say, here, this is part of your pre-service program. This year alone, we have more student teachers from Rowan in our department this year than we've had in the last 20 years combined. Um, and I attribute part of that to our retired choir director who's now in charge of supervising student teachers um, from Rowan from this area. Mrs. Barnes is there. And um, I'm very uh, excited to be on faculty at Rowan as well. So we're able to really forge that connection well. So this is kind of where it starts with art in the elementary schools. And I've told the teachers, don't do the same thing. Do what you love and do what you're good at so that, which, so that the students will love what they're good at. So every building, there are teachers that have the same standards, but they don't have to do the same lessons. So there's a lot of uh, different things going on here. And I felt super old when not one person knew the Spider-Man logo when we were in Davenport doing the lesson. I was like, oh, this is just like the Spider-Man cartoon. And they said, you mean Homecoming? And I was like, no, not Spider-Man Homecoming, not Miles Morales, the old Spider-Man. But these are some lessons that are going on, starting them early. Um, in middle school, they can pick art as an elective so that the kids who can spend 52 minutes a week, three, 52 minutes a period, three periods a week doing art and feed into our high school, we have nine full sections of ceramics running. So even though we're moving to a lot of technology, like the traditional foundation of arts are still very, uh, very much alive. By the way, those students made Miss Cunningham and I buy them from them. That cost us 20 bucks. And we did get to take those, those, uh, those ceramics home. <laughs> But moving towards that, what we knew was digital art up in the top center um, has really evolved. And now uh, with the purchase of all of our new Microsoft Surface tablets that we're pushing through, these kids can take the traditional foundation art and we now will have, we hope to have two sections of digital art and animation running at the high school. But it doesn't start there. It actually is gonna start earlier because we're now pushing uh, digital art. We've we budgeted for Microsoft Surface tablets and iPads uh, with Adobe Flash all the way down to fifth grade now, so that the first time they see animation should not and will not be at the high school level. It'll be when they're 9, 10, 11, and 12, uh, all the way through there, and I only expect it to grow and cost us more money. So student achievement, that was really drilled into me, like, you know, Mark, when you get up there and talk to the board, make sure they understand student achievement. DLGs, district learning goals. So I just, we just went through some programs that did a quick tally. In a year, just in a year, this is what's going on uh, in our schools and our districts with our students. We're at VHC hosted regional events. We host a home band competition. We host indoor competitions, but we also host the All South Jersey Junior High Band and the All South Jersey Elementary Orchestra Festival. We are the hub for those things, for all of South Jersey to come together to do that. Um, that's a lot of job security for me up there, so we like to keep all that going, keep all those performances up and out there. So the marching band, uh, near and dear to me, has changed a lot since uh, I got here in 93 or 94. Um, our indoor percussion was champions last year. Thank you very much. If you see that tractor trailer, it's the best one around our kids travel in style. And although we do travel in style, we've now consolidated from driving three trucks around to one. So um, it is functional and stylish. And we, what we did was we lined up the new uniforms with the tractor trailer with the new district brand logo so we could really take EHT pride on the road wherever we go. So acting like winners, uh, we started venturing into the areas of social justice with our school dramas, which is a very trendy thing to do right now. Uh, we, we didn't just go out there for entertainment, we went out there with a purpose with our school drama. And in the spring, we are super psyched to be bringing Les Mis, uh, bringing the French Revolution to 24 High School Drive. And, the, and as always, the majority of that orchestra is made up of students from our school uh, through there. The bottom, I guess the bottom right uh, facing it, our thespian troupe came away with top honors from the Thespian Festival in Robbinsville, New Jersey, uh, earlier this month when we got back from break. The very first slide I talked to you about collaborations, working together. We work together on a grander scale than any school around. Our National Anthem Project, this is our third time this year, involves over 700 students presenting the National Anthem, uh, giving EHT pride and pride in our country, in our football games, and supporting our team, supporting our country. And uh, the only time that I'm finding other things like this on YouTube or Google is when I'm finding other schools trying to now do what we did uh, through our National Anthem Project. It's become a, a signature uh, event that we do, and we're, we're very excited to do that. And to the right, we just had our secondary choral festival. Every single choir from Alder all the way up to the high school participated 
um, individually, and then together we brought in Dr. Thomas from Rome University to be our guest conductor for there. So again, all their firm with high school, all working together. So, if I could be frank, when I watch a lot of these videos and a lot of these productions that go on, I love them. I love watching them. As a musician, I hate listening to them. We have fantastic digital visual, and we do not have digital audio with any of our stuff. And one of the things we're gonna to do to line that up is through the community partnership and the DITA grant. If you look there, our recording studio is about 60 to 70% complete. We will now be running digital recording, giving our students uh, first-hand knowledge about how to get into the music industry. Even if you, in other words, jobs, if you don't want to be a music teacher or in a band, what do you do? Uh, what's out there? So we now have uh, very, very key aspects of music industry and technology, very, very active in our school. Uh, we, what used to be what we knew as our piano lab is now our digital music lab. Every keyboard is hooked up to a laptop. Every student in our piano classes has a subscription to what's called Playground <coughs> Sessions, which is the Quincy Jones, uh, you know, Michael Jackson producer, We Are the World, um, so that every student can work on their own level, but they can also record themselves performing uh, all the way through. A little story behind this. You, do, <laughs> you can't have good bands and good orchestras without good French horns. It's probably one of the hardest but most unique brass instruments to play. And we had a real shortage of it. And we found that our teachers had a lack of knowledge on how to teach it and how to really get kids going on it. So we, spent an, we were given the opportunity to spend an entire PD day teaching all of our music teachers in the entire district uh, how to play horn, run by our high school director. And we even had a guest, and she, she plays. She took the, um, Dr. Grucci also took lessons and also was able to play the horn. And uh, we're very excited because we have an all-state horn player and we had two kids just make all South Jersey band on horn. So we're, we're seeing a direct relation to what our teachers are getting better at to the student achievement that we're trying to gain here. What's going on in our schools now? Just take a look at this. Every, uh, both middle schools have, uh, both middle schools have two bands now. So uh, board members, when you see these instruments, that I'm asking for in the budget. We have to staff and instrumentate two full bands at every school and every middle school now, whereas we could barely sustain one. Each middle school now has two full bands, a percussion ensemble. We are the only people around with a full symphony orchestra in each middle school feeding to the only high school <coughs> symphony orchestra that we have around. Um, if you look here, our pit orchestra, again, if you go to other high school shows, you see a lot of adults sitting in the pit orchestras. You'll see very few adults unless they teach here. Uh, sitting in our pit orchestras for our musicals. Uh, just some more ideas of collaboration. We have never, ever in my 25 years here been able to do ballet and orchestra. Even if you go to Stockton to watch their Nutcracker, their dancers dance to a recording. When we do the Nutcracker, our dancers dance to a live orchestra. Uh, I'm gonna go back and then I'll do last. So, um, I would be coming to you and talking to you over the next couple months about our Summer Performing Arts Academy we'd like to do here. Um, we want to do a musical in the summer. We don't want the arts, we don't want the, the music and the education stopping on June 20th or May 3rd, Memorial Day weekend. And uh, I've spoken to our directors and we would like to put on a summer musical this summer. And they've asked if we could start getting the wheels turning for Legally Blonde. But the little subcaption connected to our over 55 neighbors. When I bought my first condo in 1994 and I came down here at Bay's Landing, I had to sign a little thing that said, just so you know, you live near an airport now and there's, you're gonna hear airplanes. Okay, I signed it, I paid whatever it was. But when people buy these houses right by a high school, none of these developers are saying, by the way, you live by a high school, you might hear a football game, you might hear a marching band, and we're trying to um, accommodate those neighbors. So when we spoke to Mr. Gunther, Mr. Christo, they said, how about we do this, how about we take coupons for the summer show and we leave them on all the doors in the 55 and we bring them out and see like, we make a lot of noise, but it's a lot of good noise and this is what the result is to bring them through there. And we also wanna start a summer program similar to what Galloway um, has going on and uh, we're gonna be working with our community ed partners to do that. So the last slide is actually the one I'm the most proud of and I think it's the most important. The arts for all, our self-contained classes the high school, have a semester of music technology. I apologize, I had to chop that young man's face off because he did not, I could not get his photo release, uh, so I had to, to crunch that. But um, our self-contained classes at the high school have a semester of digital uh, music technology. He's on a 
$2,500 seaboard rise that's all tactile sensitive, and that child doesn't speak, but plays the piano and makes sound. And after their semester of um, after their semester of music technology, they have a semester of dance and theater. And it's it, what we might think is kind of like maybe even hokey, but these kids love ballroom dancing to Sinatra, wow. um, <laughs> which and both are lost arts. There's a lot of people that don't understand either. And uh, this is our second year in a row now. On Mondays, we offer guitar classes at Eagle Academy. So in addition to their art classes with Ms. Montecavo, our Eagle students also uh, get guitar lessons as well. Thank you, Jeff, for always sharing your room with us. <laughs> I was walking in, she's got earbuds. So that really is just a fraction um, of what's going on. And I'm very excited about this, um, everything that's going on. And none of it happens without the support of the administration um, and the board. And more importantly, it, I can talk and talk and we can support and support the teachers in my department work together so incredibly well and um, I just couldn't be more proud of them. Uh, actually, they're all at LB1 now waiting for me because we have reception for our retirees. So I want to thank you for indulging me and if you have any questions about anything going on or you have any requests, um, by all means reach out to me or, or any of my bosses and uh, we'll get it taken care of. Do you guys have any questions for me? I do have a question, uh, Mr. President, for Dr. Kadeski. Um, does the Eagle Academy have a regular music program in place? Um, we, they have art and they have guitar. And anybody can be in it who wants to. We don't force it. Um, we were going to implement like an actual general, you know, general music in the curriculum, but we didn't think it was fair to force it. An Eagle Academy student who wants to participate in any of our arts program at the high school get bussed over. So we have two Eagle students in Les Mis, and if they would like to take choir or like to take piano, uh, we will work it into their schedule. So one way or the other, we make sure that they have access to it uh, through there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ms. Bird? Um, thank you. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, the middle schools, art is an elective, so they can take it three times a week for 50 minutes. How many teachers do you have? At Alder? At Alder and Fernwood. At Fernwood, we have two, uh, we have one and a half, the, we, I'm sorry, we have two and a half FTEs, full-time equivalents, uh, full-time band, full-time choir, half-time orchestra, split with Miller. At Alder, we have one full-time band, a two-fifths orchestra, and a full-time choir um, through there. Because it's an artist? Yes, that's for band, orchestra, and chorus. Yes, and art. I don't want I hope I, yes. and uh, we have one full-time art teacher for both and a, uh, an art club for both as well. Any other questions? I just wanted to say that um, I enjoyed your presentation and um, I've seen the uh, Fine and Performing Arts, <coughs> excuse me, program in Acarpa Township. I've seen it, I want to say, I can say that I've seen it since 2005. And I've seen it up close, personal, and the amount of students and programs that have been implemented from from when I first encountered the music program till now is amazing. I think the program has grown tremendously, and I think that um, the one thing that stuck out to me, all of it was really great because uh, I am a lover of fine performing arts, but when you said that the teachers, uh, I think it was art teachers, that they teach the same standards, but you allow them to teach kind of, the lessons could be different. And I think that's so important when you say all students, I think including also all teachers, you know, all art teachers, can, they can kind of grow in the area that they kind of have a passion for. But just, Dr. Grusha, the, the growth of the music program, the fine performing arts program, and EHT has, has truly changed and transformed over the years, and I think it's amazing and great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Mrs. Burke. Thank you. Um, and to piggyback on what Ms. Gilbert Floyd said, I think that the way you started your presentation with the collaboration piece of your department is a wonderful example for the whole district to strive, and maybe the music department could be used as a model to bridge maybe grade level um, cooperations and uh, you know different all the different schools because like you said we're all EHT and so maybe we should consider that 
from a district. And I have a personal, real quick, I'm sorry. My daughter and her friend on Sunday asked me to take them to the store because their music teacher's birthday was this week. And they said that she gives up her lunch all the time for them uh, to practice. And so they wanted to do something nice for her. And I think that that is a wonderful example of why your department is so successful because it's obvious that the teachers give their all to their students. So you can thank tell you. your daughter or Fred, I'm going to be 50 in six weeks. Oh, you know, yeah. Like well, um, shopping or baking cupcakes. I hope you like candy because <laughs> that's what she got. Well, I just want to uh, take a minute to thank Dr. K for everything he's done for, for this district, for our students. Uh, I've been involved personally in our, in our music program since 2001, uh, pretty much nonstop. Uh, both my daughters uh, went through and one is still in the program. It's outstanding. Um, I think what's uh, remarkable is Dr. K's gift to get people excited and involved in the arts, our students as well as our teachers. And you see all the programs are growing and that's just so wonderful. Um, some students will be interested in maybe doing music or the arts for a living. Some may want to teach, um, some may want to perform, but for many it's just the beauty of being able to experience and learn about it as part of being a well-rounded student and a well-rounded person. So keep up the great work. Keep these programs growing. The more students that, that we can touch with these programs, the better. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I'm going to put my head out the door now. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Dr. Kadetsky. Nice job. And um, we have one more presentation. That would be from Dr. Michelle Schreiner, Supervisor of World Languages. Excuse me, Dr. Schreiner, if you can use the microphone on this end, we can't hear. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you. Is, this, is, it, is it on? Turn the slide on. It would help if I turned it on. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to begin with our district learning goal of student achievement. Okay, now it's going to make noise. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I don't want to hurt everyone's ears. Sorry. So, one of the major goals in the World Languages Department at the beginning of my three-year plan was to attain model program status for our Espanol Blantes program. That program is for our heritage and native Spanish speakers in grades five through 12. And I'm happy to report that we were successful. We applied for model program status and we did receive model program status. Um, that program, is the status is a two-year designation, and you'll see in the slide on the left the plaque that we received from the New Jersey Department of Education, as well as one of the banners. Uh, we have banners hanging in Miller School, Alder Avenue, Fernwood Avenue, and also at the high school, just recognizing the program. And since it is just a two-year designation, we have since reapplied, and we are currently awaiting a site visit from the New Jersey Department of Education in hopes of maintaining status as a model program. Um, part of being a model program requires that we host school districts, and we hosted quite a number, some as close as Hannington School District and as far away as Pas uh, Passaic County Technical. Uh, we even hosted Ben Salem High School from Pennsylvania. One of my goals was also to promote our program. The Heritage and um, the Heritage Language Program, Hispano Blantes, is based off of literacy instruction. And our literacy skills, we know, transfer. The stronger our students' reading and writing skills in Spanish, the better their grades in their English classes, and even outside of English, in their science, in their social studies classes, 
any time that they are doing reading and writing. And so our hope was to promote the program. And to that end, we gave presentations at the NJEA convention in 2018 and again in 2019, also at the Foreign Language Educators of New Jersey Conference. Additionally, the two images in the center and on the right um, represent publications. I've been fortunate enough to have several articles published. Um, most recently, one will be coming out that um, Mrs. Dilks co-authored with me, and that'll be published in the Language Educator, which is a national magazine for world languages, and that'll be coming out next month. I wanted to share with you some of our numbers for the Seal of Biliteracy. Um, this program recognizes students who graduate literate in two languages, English of course and another language. We have seen pretty much a steady increase in the number of graduates since the program was implemented in 2015. I don't yet have the data for 2020. We've just completed the biliteracy testing. Some of the results are in, but not all. So I'll be able to share that soon. Um, but we're hoping that the trend, the upward trend will continue and that more and more of our graduates in each succeeding graduating class will be graduating with the seal of biliteracy. I also wanted to share with you the number of languages that we're testing in. Uh, this year, the testing companies have met the call from across the country for more languages. And so we've had an increase just in Egg Harbor Township in the number of uh, tests that were uh, different languages that we were testing in and um, added several more to that and we're hoping for favorable results and that the students will be graduating with the seal of biliteracy in more languages. So also I'm in charge of the English language learners and uh, as you know since Dr. Fredericks retired um, I have to say it has been my pleasure to get to know the ELL teachers um, and just to share with the members of the Board of Education what a wonderful department they are. Um, it has really been an excellent opportunity for me to learn from them and for me to get to know a whole group of students that I did not know. And um, it's, it's been a wonderful learning opportunity. So before I could set any measurable goals for student achievement, quite honestly, I needed to learn. Um, the English language learner department is one that um, there, there's a lot of regulations involved. So the images that you see in this particular slide are the areas where I needed to, to brush up and I needed to learn. And what you're looking at is I needed to learn a lot of the New Jersey code related to our English language learners the um, federal regulations, the parts of the Every Student Succeeds Act that relate to our English learners, uh, the Title III funding as it relates to our English learners, all of those have been areas where, where I've needed to learn. So in the next three-year plan, I'll be able to set particular goals for student achievement uh, now that I feel like I've kind of gotten up to speed with the regulations. So moving on to our next um, district learning goal of climate and culture. Um, all of our administration has been charged by Dr. Guccio, Mr. Santilli with telling our story on social media. And so I started with a Twitter page. Um, I quickly learned students are not on Twitter. Students are not interested in Twitter. So I had to branch out to an Instagram page. Um, but one of the goals that I set for the department, quite honestly, was to increase the number of followers among students and parents. Uh, I can't really tell you that I've been successful with the parents part. Um, that was going to remain a goal that uh, I would like to continue to work on. Uh, for some reason, some parents are, are just very reluctant to use social media. Uh, I see it as a wonderful way for not just me as a parent to learn what's going on in, in, in my children's schools, but just a, a way to keep up with what's going on across our district. There's so many wonderful things going on. So how we reach out to parents and encourage them to follow our pages, um, I'll be working on that. Uh, so the slide you're going to see here looks a little abysmal, quite honestly. Uh, so Twitter provides uh, analytics. Um, Instagram does not. So I can tell you that the number of new followers has increased on Instagram, 
but I don't think very many of them are parents. They tend to be students. Um, the number on, of new followers on Twitter was decreasing, and some of that is reflected in the, my, uh, I guess, increased use of Instagram versus Twitter. My son tells me I need to make a TikTok page. I'm not so certain that parents are going to want to follow that, but that's with the eighth grader thinks. We'll see. <laughs> So of course it will come as no surprise to you that Egg Harbor Township is diverse. I share with you that 26% of our students' ethnicity is Hispanic. Um, also the top five languages that are spoken among our students after English. And so one of the goals in climate and culture in my department was to seek ways to make our non-English speaking parents feel comfortable and to feel welcome in our schools. And we, we, as educators, we know the more involved parents are, the higher student achievement is. So this is, of course, a very important goal in my department. And the images that you'll see here are as a result of our um, bilingual parent coordinator, uh, Mrs. Jenny Dilks, which is funded through our Title III funding. We have created the image on the top right is from her web page, which offers a plethora of resources in Spanish for our Spanish-speaking families. Um, the page, um, which is on our community page, on the district homepage, Recursos para Padres, you'll know it. It's the only one that's not in English um, under community. But what I've shown you here is just a couple of the tutorials that are on that page, as well as some images. We've had three educational sessions in the evening for our Spanish-speaking families. The turnout has been outstanding, just outstanding, I have to tell you. And each of the evenings was centered around an educational goal. It wasn't just come out and socialize. It was come out and we were teaching. And Mrs. Dilks was teaching the parents primarily how to use the parent portal. And I need to give a shout out to the IT department who has been instrumental in making these nights such a success in helping us create accounts for the parents um, while Mrs. Dilks was teaching them how to see your child's grades. Of course, our district is no longer printing report cards. So it's incumbent upon us to teach parents, how do we see our students' grades? How do I communicate with parents um, or with my child's teachers? And those sorts of things. Uh, overall, they were extremely, extremely positive the evenings. And then I move on. Of course, our district does not just have Spanish speakers. So as part of the goal to reach all of our non-English speaking families, we held parent nights for our English learners. And so this was the first opportunity for us to use Microsoft Translator on tablets. And we had simultaneous live translation. You can see some of the parents holding the tablets in seven different languages live at the same time. So you can see the teachers wore a headset with a microphone and as the teachers were speaking in English, the parents were able to read on the tablet in their own language what the teacher was saying. What a wonderful event. It, we had two of them. It was uh, just a wonderful, wonderful beginning. So I won't tell you that we've met that goal and that I've checked it off because I see it just as the start. And um, it, it was very, very well received, you can imagine, among the parents. And then, of course, our final district learning goal is community partnerships. So one of the goals in among our English learners is to reach out to our students and to help them and especially our newcomers to feel comfortable in our schools. And you can imagine our township is very large. Depending upon where a family moves, they may or may not know of the Atlanta County Library. So our ELL teacher, Mrs. McGowan, planned this wonderful event and we took students to the library. She had planned everything out with the librarians to help the students be aware of all the free resources 
available to them so that they could then share that with their families. Um, the event was very, very well received among the students. And then my final goal with um, community partnerships, I have to say it is not very successful, but I will share it with you. Um, it's important to have goals, right? We can't achieve all of them. So my goal, um, two goals here in one, was to reach out to the state universities and to begin sharing with them the wonderful work. Our world language teachers from Miller School all the way through the middle schools into the high school worked so hard developing our students' proficiency. If they didn't, we wouldn't have so many students graduating with the seal of biliteracy. So I wanted to work with the universities to let them know about the seal of biliteracy. And so I've made some connections with Stockton, with Montclair, with Rutgers. Um, but it's a work in progress. I can't really tell you that I've been all that successful. My goal is college credit for the seal of biliteracy. And I, I don't know, we'll see. That's the goal. Um, so insight, I have insight up here because another one of my goals was to increase the number of Spanish speaking substitutes. I can't tell you I've been all that successful, but I'm working hard at it, I'm trying. <laughs> um, we need, bilingual substitutes in every building in our district. We have Spanish speakers, of course, from K through 12. We could use bilingual substitutes in every building. Um, so I will continue to work on that, and I hope in the future to be able to report some success to you. Um, so those are my goals and my three-year plan, and um, I'm happy to entertain questions that you may have. I, I have a question. Board members. Okay. Um, how many languages are currently offered? So we have um, four. And, and oh, follow yes. up to that, and what grade levels do you start teaching the languages? Yes. Thank you. So we have four separate languages, but five programs. Um, we offer Latin, German at the high school, um, French, and Spanish. Um, also at the high school, French and Spanish begin at Alter here and at Fernwood. Our Spanish program does not begin until fourth grade. Um, for board members who have been in, in the township, we did have a program um, that started in first grade, but that program was cut in 2009. So we begin Spanish instruction in grade four at the Miller School. That was the first question, I'm sorry, and what was your second question? Well, how many, uh, how many, languages, how many languages are offered and what okay. grades do you start teaching? So you, you pretty much okay. teach both at the same time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other? Mrs. Burke. Okay, I have a couple questions. Um, to piggyback off of Mr. Price uh, with the languages, have we ever considered teaching Mandarin with the global business world? It seems like a lot of high schools are pushing for that. Yes, Mr. Castellano, I see, is shaking his head yes. And he'll recall the time when, um, and Dr. Gertrude will as well. Um, it was a number of years ago when there was federal funding to begin a program, and I petitioned the Board of Education at that time to apply for the federal funding. Um, but at the time, the board wasn't in favor of my application, so we did not apply for it. Okay, thank you. Hopefully, maybe we could reconsider that at some point. Um, another question, uh, with parent outreach, um, yes. I applaud your efforts. It's not easy reaching out to so many different cultural backgrounds and languages. Uh, so the top five that we serve is from your slide, is Spanish, Vietnamese, Bengali, Chinese, and Urdu. Those Do are the most numerous no, among okay, our students. So we like have many highest. more. Great. So at a minimum, do those languages, do those parents have access to our social media in those languages? Do we post things in those languages? In those languages, do we no. Do handouts in those languages? Is our website, is there mm -hmm. a translator piece on our so website? So we're just beginning, and I have to tell you, I, I'm just starting to have more faith in the translation. Um, prior to having the event at Swift and Slaybaugh, I went into Miss um, Courtney Casto's ELL class at the high school and I said, help me, 
help me test this out, and Courtney was very receptive. And so I used Vietnamese students, Arabic-speaking students, and we had a Haitian Creole student, and we were testing the, the tablets and the Microsoft Translator in three languages. And I will tell you that the Vietnamese students said to me, eh, this is just okay, the translation. So I have to take their word for it. I can read the French and see if the French is good. I can read the Spanish and see if the Spanish is good, but I cannot read the Vietnamese. I cannot read the Arabic. And so it, I wanted to use the students, of course, who are proficient in those languages to say to me, you know, is this good? So it, it's coming along, um, but I don't necessarily know that I feel confident just yet to be putting things out without having someone to go to to proofread it for me to say is this really correct. Thank you. Um, with Embrace being one of our district goals, yes. uh, are we in your budget piece, are you going to account for some kind of software or something that can be more reliable so that we can reach our parents. To be honest with you, I don't. I wouldn't want to spend district money on it when the free software is really coming along. Um, I, I, I have full faith that that there are, we are by no means the only um, avenue that is looking for more reliable translation. It it is coming along, and and some things you know you just have to consider how you phrase things and, and, and rephrase them, and you get a better translation, and some of it is just trial and error. Last question. Um, thank you. Uh, as far as Spanish starting in fourth, or mm -hmm. Spanish or French starting in fourth grade, um, are the elementary teachers, K through three, required uh, to teach Spanish in any form so from the state standards? Um, if so, excuse me, I'm sorry. And if so, um, does that fall under your department? And are they provided with any resources to help them meet those demands? So as you know, as a public school, we're required to provide a standards-based program. And a standards-based program for world languages requires interaction with the human being. Um, that speaks the languages so that there's a negotiation of meaning. It's not just this is one and this is the number two and, and it's not just isolated vocabulary. So for that reason, we don't begin until fourth grade. Any other, any other board members? I just want to say that um, I think your, your program really captures the engage embrace, engage, and educate part of what a Carver Township um, looks like now. And just the, um, well, the, the fact that with the parent nights and having the translator there for the parents, I think that that speaks volumes to, to our district, embracing the new cultures and diversity that we have in our, that are here in our district now. And I, and, and I can see it just growing more and more. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you for it. Uh, taking that initiative um, because no one can imagine what it's like to be somewhere and not understand yes. what's going on and what's being said to yes. you. And it, um, it, it was only successful because of the teachers, mm -hmm. um, quite honestly. Uh, Mrs. Moranis is here, Mrs. Sardinas um, as well at, at, at Swift School. Um, both of them were, were just so open to the idea and, and wanting to, yes, let's, let's make this happen. And, and that's that speaks volumes. Well, thank you because that, that's and I always say it, and I always will. A L L, whether it's all students, all families, and if they're part of our EHD community, we have to try to find a way to include them. So, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. One more, Mrs. Bird. I'm sorry, I do have one more. Um, you had mentioned on your last slide that there's a need for bilingual uh, substitutes. Yes. Has that need been expressed to Insight? that you're aware oh, of? Oh, most certainly I have. Okay. <laughs> so what I, I'm doing currently is, is uh, I, I reached out to Mrs. Dilks and have been working with the families that have attended our Noche Latina to let them know this is an area where we are looking for employees and um, substitutes. So uh, I, I was, I'm hoping that that will bear some fruit. It'll just take some time. Thank you. Um, has Insight asked for any of the contact information for that, for them to reach out? No. Since they're our substitute provider? No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Thank you. Well, I'd just like to, uh, I'd just like to uh, close by thanking you. Don't think you're going to get away that easy, Dr. Schreiner, because I have to, I have to thank you so much for the excellent work that you do for the district. I mean, so the two pieces of what you're doing are so very, very important, allowing our students the ability to study a second language. Both of my daughters, as you know, studied French, and my older daughter got the seal of biliteracy. And of course, the, the whole English language learner, ELL piece, is so very, very important as an educational service for the entire community. Um, and then, you know, just on a personal level, I mean, there, there's just no one you know, more knowledgeable and dedicated and enthusiastic than you are. So we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Schreiner. Great job. I'm especially impressed when we align our goals uh, to the district learning goals. And as you can see, Dr. Schreiner is very goal driven and uh, very transparent. Um, you know, she said, you know, I have goals, but I didn't meet some goals. And that's what makes us work harder each and every day. So I appreciate your uh, honesty and always your integrity uh, and your efforts for our school district. Um, um, just, I just want to close uh, with um, thank you for your patience. And I think this was. Um, very informative presentations. The board is in the budgeting process. So it's important that they heard what the programs and departments are about. It's a little deeper look for them. Um, we are huge. We are a very large school district. We have great things going on. And when the board is presented their, the, the budget binder and we look at that budget, some of the questions are gonna be asked in information sessions like this. So they are familiar with the programs and the questions that we ask, how many languages are there? Um, so that's very informative, so I thank you. And if you're new to the district, hopefully you learned um, that you uh, are seated in a uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, position right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you for a very wonderful uh, superintendent's report and series of presentations. Uh, which set the stage for our uh, budget meetings, which uh, are to come next month. So at this point, uh, we're going to ask for our student representative. I know one of our student reps is busy winning a county championship, but we do have one of our reps with us tonight to, uh, to report. Thank you, hello. Um, as you can see, I'm alone tonight, and I know how much everyone likes to listen to Nick, so um, I'll try and keep it brief, uh, but there's a lot of good stuff going on, so I'll make sure to cover it. Um, so to start, I just wanted to give another huge congratulations to um, Mrs. Jane Medio, who is an art teacher at the high school. Uh, she was selected to be the, um, she was the 2019-2020 Veterans of Foreign Wars uh, Teacher of the Year for Atlantic County. Uh, recently, the Egg Harbor Township Police Department has been coming out um, and introducing our high school seniors to the NEO program, um, also known as the Not Even Once program. Um, and it basically focuses on addiction, resources, signs of addiction. And the officers are wonderful. They give really meaningful and personal stories to the students um, to draw attention and hopefully have the students reach out to them if they're having problems uh, personally. Uh, moving on. Last Friday, the high school had its annual winter pep rally, which is always fun. The students had a great time watching and participating in the first ever uh, students for staff volleyball competitions. Um, and some other activities, such as relays um, and staff basketball games versus the students were crowd pleasers as well. Um, the high school also hosted a very successful elective fair yesterday, um, where many students showed off their current elective classes um, to juniors, underclassmen, and even uh, plenty of upcoming eighth graders who will be at the high school next year. Um, also for electives, the um, African American Studies class has been extremely busy. Um, they attended a Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King panel discussion at Stockton University uh, recently, and they also, uh, along with the Environmental Action Club and uh, some students from the National Honor Society, they participated in a beach cleanup day uh, for MLK Day of Service um, in Atlantic City, which was great. Um, next are our high school's mock trial team, and we often refer to them as our legal eagles. Uh, they had a fantastic month. They defeated Holy Spirit and ACIT, and um, as we mentioned, they were in the 
Atlantic County Mock Trial Championship tonight, and I found out probably minutes before the meeting started from a couple of friends, including Nick, that they're now Atlantic County, County champs, which is amazing, um, and we're all very proud of them. And lastly, I wanted to recognize some athletic achievements. Both are in uh, track. So for boys, uh, Mark Marcus Wood, Will Spence, Malachi Wesley, and Anthony Vasquez came in first place for the shuttle hurdle relay at the New Jersey Group 4 State Relays. And for the girls, uh, Annie Rutledge, Gabby German, Lauren Prince, and Isabella Leek won the girls' sprint medley competition championship race at the Group 4 State Relay Championships on the 19th. And that concludes my report. Uh, thank you and have a great night. Very good, thank you, thank you. Thank you for a wonderful report. Next, we are gonna open up uh, this portion of the meeting for public comments on agenda items only. If anyone has comments on the agenda, um, anyone? Okay, okay, come on up. Please give us your name and address for the record. Hello? Okay, Jenny Dilks, uh, 221 Lip Street. And I'm talking a little bit as a teacher and as a mom. I do wanna thank the board for all their support and I wanna thank my supervisor uh, because she does support us so much. We have grown, um, also we do a lot of, like Dr. Kadexi was saying, we try to work together as teachers. She gives us time to do cross-curricular uh, connectivity. We have time to, with the PLCs, she's always supporting us, asking us questions. So I just wanna say that I am so happy to be back. I was working in well, 2000, the year 2000 to 2007, then I stay home with my kids. I came back to work now and it's just, I, it's amazing how much it has grown. So I just wanna thank you and my supervisor for it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, seeing no uh, other comments, we're going to go ahead and move into finance and operations. Uh, we did hear our committee reports uh, last week. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, ask the chair if there's anything else you might like to highlight or reinforce from last week. No, I believe we're fine. Very good, thank you. So then I'm gonna ask first for uh, a motion for transfers, 8.1. Can I have a motion, please? We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask for a motion for. Uh, finance and operations items 8.2 through 8.15. Can I have a motion, please? Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, who's the second? I missed the second. Thank you, Mrs. Bird. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Delabar? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Moving on to curriculum, is there anything, uh, Mrs. Summer, you'd like to reinforce or restate from last week? Not at this time, thank you. Very good then. I'm gonna look for a motion then on 9.1. So moved. Second. Moved and second. And any discussion on uh, curriculum? Seeing none, may I have a roll call? Mr. Delabar? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. 
Moving now to uh, personnel, um, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Charlton if there's anything he feels uh, that you'd like to highlight. Not at this time, Mr. President. Thank you. Very good. Then I'm going to ask for a uh, motion for 10.1 through 10.6. So made. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Mr. Delabarca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? No, to be 25, yes to the rest. To be specific, 10.4 B25 is a no. Yes. Thank you. And Mrs. Bird? Yes to all. 10.4 Thank you, Mr. Castellano. Yes. Thank you. Now I'll ask Dr. Cruccio if there are any introductions you would like to make. Yes, there are, and I'd like to congratulate the following people and present to you for the very first time in public our new Egg Harbor Township employees, and I'll begin with Danae Palomino, a compliance paraprofessional Davenport. Please stand. Latoya Reynolds, ratio, ratio paraprofessional, Davenport. <laughs> Joanne Roden, compliance paraprofessional, Swift. <laughs> Misha Copeland, paraprofessional, Miller. <laughs> Jordan Watts, ratio paraprofessional, at the high school. Shakira Brown, Compliance Paraprofessional, Davenport. Totally solar. Okay. And last but not least, Michelle Iolucci, Attendance slash Truancy Officer. Welcome and congratulations. Welcome aboard. Welcome. Next, we are going to move to old business and uh, our HIB, and I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Elko to read our resolution for HIB. I would ask the board to make a motion to affirm the HIB determinations as discussed in executive session for DAV 02, JDM 01, F03, all 1920, as well as the disciplinary hearing report uh, number 3, 1920, all as discussed in executive session. May I have a motion? Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Delabar? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Abstain? Not voting on that one. Not, oh, I just, what did you ask me? I'm sorry. It's a resolution for the ones that were reported in December. Oh, December. That are okay, now being tonight. Um, I'm sorry. Approved. Okay. Yes. Affirmed. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Uh, moving uh, now to communications, just, just to highlight, we have an updated board calendar for everyone. Uh, we also received uh, recognition for school board recognition month. We received certificates from the Commissioner of Education from the President of the State Board of Education, as well as from the Governor and from the Lieutenant Governor. Um, we will now move to our second comment period, which uh, may be on any topic at all for a uh, period of three minutes each. Does anyone have any comments for the Board, please? Hello, my name is John Servin. I'm a resident of VHD. I live on Farmwood Avenue. The first thing is the feedback. It drives me nuts. And I'm sure it drives you guys nuts. The way that you guys fix that, there's several things you can do. The number one thing is you turn down the volume of these speakers. The next thing you can do is you can point the microphones down at the ground. These things are omnidirectional, but they have a cone that goes like this. And obviously that's not working right now. Um, but the third thing you can do, which is probably the most effective, I'm not sure about your board, 
But if you have a treble, you and I have bass, middle, and treble, turn the treble down. Um, that's the thing that's looping and causing the feedback. The other thing you can do is just get a better ground. You just attach a piece of metal to the ground and um, it should work. Um, the next thing I want to say is last week I was here, um, I heard that we were becoming a trial uh, trial township for the LGBT curriculum. Is there a way that we can view this curriculum? We're not a trial. Okay. That's all I needed to, I was just wondering what that was um, because I was here last week. So it's a state mandate. Uh, every district in New Jersey will be expected to um, develop curriculum around uh, the, the topics that they have provided and we will be um, working with a committee to uh, create that curriculum and um, place it in the actual K-12 curriculum. It actually will be more for students in grade 8 through 12 um, and that will also go through the curriculum committee um, and the board has to approve it. Okay, that's actually pretty much all I had to ask. Okay. So, and actually, last one more question. So, are you guys determining that, or is there an external uh, group that's determining that? Like the curriculum, what's being taught? So, we are given by the state what we are supposed to teach, and we take the standards and we take that expectation and we develop how we will actually teach that. But in essence, the topics they, they provide. Okay, uh, where can I view the topics? Do there is there a site that I can go on or anything like that? Um, if you have your information, um, I will. Um, we can get it to you. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you very much, and we do need to fix that feedback. I just emailed. Today. Yeah. <laughs> if you want, I can fix that for you afterwards. If you don't want. Sure. I mean. Okay, so we, we will do that. Now, seeing, seeing no other comments, uh, I'm gonna close that second public portion, um, and I'm gonna ask if there are any comments, uh, final comments first uh, from board members. Mrs. Sloggy, then Mrs. Sullivan. I incorrectly um, voted on the wrong thing, but um, it's 10.4 B26, no. And yes to 25. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes, um, I want to bring up the topic. We didn't get to do it in our retreat about uh, the committees. When are we going to be talking about them? The setup of the committees. The setup. Uh, well, we'll talk. We can talk about them. Um, we can talk about that at our work meeting. And if you'd like to send me an email or give me a call, let me know exactly what what it is you'd want to talk about, and we'll certainly make time for that at our next work meeting. Okay, great, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Mike first and Christy. Well, I just have one thing. I wanted to um, thank everybody for um, coming out to the um, board retreat, the board members, and I think we got a lot accomplished. We learned a lot about how boards operate, and um, I think it's a great thing that we do every year as a board of education, so that's all. And thank you. Christy. Um, I just have a question for the curriculum committee. Um, I think this year uh, a coach from Stockton is doing a free camp for boys for basketball. And I remember asking if uh, we could provide that for girls as well. And I think um, we were told that we would ask this coach. And so I just want to know what the follow-up is on that. So obviously you don't know now, but maybe you could look into that so that our girls have the opportunity as well. Yes. Thank you. Any further comment? I have one more. Um, I just want to encourage everybody that's out there that um, when you come to our uh, formal meeting here, we vote on things and, and you don't really get the whole picture. I really would like people to start coming out to our work sessions or at least watching them on TV because that's when you hear the board really working through everything. So I'd encourage everybody to come to the work sessions. What, one more, Mrs. Bird. Um, one for the road. Yeah. One for the road. Sorry. Uh, I was wondering, we had so many amazing things in January that our students accomplished.
Could we get a bulleted list posted on our social media to highlight all of these things or on our website? Because I feel like if people read that we won mock trial, we were six out of eight for top prize of something, we won the robotics, we did this, the track, you know, it really highlights how awesome our district is and how amazing our kids are. So can we maybe, it, does anyone else think? We, we could thing? look into something like that, but like I said, it, we are huge. Right now it's being done individually, so each department, each team has their own Twitter, Facebook um, that we oversee. So, I mean, I could show you I'm part of the management of that, looking at that. And we try to highlight um, on the school websites, the principals uh, send out that report that you receive from me. Um, there's links. They share that with their school community as well. So, I mean, we can have that discussion at our next administrators meeting to see if that can be compiled. I know one time we did try to task the secretary to get all that information and put it out, including all the upcoming events, and it was, it was overwhelming. So, but we will look into it. Thank you. I'd also like to add, too, that um, each week the buildings have been putting out their uh, weekly electronic newsletter. It's called a s'more. Um, and a lot of those accomplishments are also uh, highlighted in those s'more, uh, in the s'more updates, um, I should say. Um, and in addition, uh, Dr. Gruccio, we could take your uh, superintendent's report. They're on, on the website, but we can go ahead and put those um, through the district um, social media feeds as well. Um, so now that you're done presenting, uh, we can also take that, uh, PDF it, and same thing with the YouTube video and highlight uh, things as a whole. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think that's a very valid uh, notion and a comment. You know, uh, we're relatively new to social media the EHT district as a whole. So we're working towards it. Uh, our, our meetings are now uh, recorded for broadcast and we have a social media presence, but it's a work in progress. So there are going to, going to be things that we can and we will improve. Uh, maybe we're going to have things on the individual pages, but also feed into a central page or pages, depending on the different platforms that we use. But you know, it's, it's, again, it's a work in progress, and um, I like what I see so far, and we have more to do. So with that, seeing no other comments, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Very informative evening, uh, very good meeting, and uh, we'll be heading into February and our budget season. So everyone have a very good and safe evening. Good night. May I have a motion, please? So made. Second. second. Motion and a second. <laughs> All in favor? We stand adjourned. <laughs>